Well, your name was a thing in 2016. Yeah, I know, I'm a little late to the party. So here's a short summary of the plot before I dive into the timeline issue of this movie. And of course, any content from here on contains spoilers. So consider yourselves warned. There are these two high schoolers, Taki, a boy living in Tokyo, and Mitsuha, a girl from a quiet town. The Freaky Friday switches start after Mitsuha makes a wish under a tori. During these switches, they get to know the life, friends, and <clears throat> character of the other person. After a while, they realize that they fell in love with each other. But then, one day, the swaps stop, and Taki is left to wander. This time, in his own body, he seeks out the town. But once he gets there, he's shocked to see that it was destroyed by a comet that struck the town three years ago. Finally, he realizes that he and Mitsuha have been living in different timelines. It's a huge shock when he finds out that Mitsuha was killed in that incident. But then, he remembers the magic sake, in which a part of Mitsuha's soul is said to remain. By drinking that sake, he fuses with Mitsuha's soul. This enables him to go back to her timeline. And with that last switch, they are able to save the town, and everyone, including Mitsuha, survives. And we get a beautiful happy end. <laughs> Wait a minute. So you mean to tell me that two high schoolers who seem to be constantly looking at their smartphones throughout the entire movie did not realize that they lived three years apart? They even communicate with a diary on their phone for crying out loud. There. You can even see them scrolling through the dates. Failing to see that your milk is way past the expiration date is one thing, but that? I'm sorry, but my suspension of disbelief only goes so far. And don't give me, well, you can suspend your disbelief that body switching is possible, so why should the cell phones be less realistic than that? Well, body switching is a fantasy element and kind of makes sense on its own. But to suspend my disbelief on the cell phone issue, I need to accept that the two main characters are dense as a rock. This bothered me. So I sat down and thought way too much about this. Could this cell phone issue have been fixed? What if they had found out? Let's assume they did. After having switched several times, they realized the difference in their timelines. However, it didn't occur to them why this would be any weirder than anything else happening to them right now. I mean, they are switching bodies after all. In this version, the name of Mitsuha's town feels awfully familiar to Taki. He tries to remember where he could have heard it, but he can't really place it. But then, one morning, being in Mitsuha's body, Taki watches the news where the upcoming event of the comet flying by is announced. There it hits him. He finally realizes why the name sounded so familiar. This is the town that got wiped out by that comet three years ago in his timeline. But suddenly, he feels awfully dizzy. Before he can warn anyone, he collapses. Next thing he knows is that he wakes up in his apartment in Tokyo. He waits for two days, but the switch doesn't occur again. He doesn't know what to do. It's not like getting on a train and going to the town would fix things. After all, in his timeline, the town has already been destroyed. But in lack of better options, he decides to make the trip anyway. Maybe once he gets there, the switch might happen again. At least, that's what he hopes for. Once he gets to the abandoned town, there's only one day left in Mitsuha's timeline before the comet will strike. But the switch doesn't happen. Taki gets more desperate. A sign catches his eye. A sign that promotes sake. Finally, he remembers the sacred kuchi sake that holds a part of Mitsuha's soul. Taki then decides to go up the mountain to get a connection to Mitsuha. As he drinks her kuchi sake, he is finally able to make a switch one last time as in the original. And from there on, things would play out the same way. I realized that in this version, the story would lose its shock value. I must say, it really hit me when I first watched the movie and Taki found out that Mitsuha had been dead for three years. But I think this new version without the cell phone dilemma would gain at least a stronger sense of believability and maybe even a bit more tension building up to the big climax. So both versions have their pros and cons in my eyes but I still adore the original version, despite my criticism. Even Shinkai himself recognized that this movie has its issues, and honestly, I think some of his other movies are better than Kimi no Nawa. I'm no expert on media and why this movie got so much more attention than his other films, and no, it's not because of the stunning artwork, that is even better in Garden of Words, I think. But my favorite movie of his has got to be 5cm per second. Even though it is much older, the art is still amazing. 
It was the first of his movies I watched and I have rewatched it a dozen times since then. It's a beautiful but also a little sad story about people growing apart from each other and I think five centimeters per second and your name are especially beautiful together. One being about how sadly we sometimes grow apart from each other and the other about how everything and everyone is connected. So go watch it if you haven't already. Okay, that's it from me. Leave a like if you think that plot hole fix is legitimate or point out something I might have missed in the comments. Thanks for watching. See ya.